Good morning. morning. Happy Independence Day. Welcome to worship at Salem. Welcome also to those who are joining us on Facebook, and we hope that you will be able to come and worship with us in person soon. Pastor Mike is on vacation. He'll be returning to the office July 13th. Emergency contact information is in your bulletin. You may pick up your script orders forms today. Please return the completed forms next Sunday, July 11th. Movie night is Tuesday, July 16th. Meet at local 218 in Brainerd for supper at 5.30. Movie is at 7 p.m. in Baxter. Everyone is welcome. Bob Cooper celebrated his 91st birthday on July 1st. Come to coffee hour after worship for cupcakes and a chance to wish Bob a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Bob. Okay, I'd like to open it up to any other announcements. Good morning. I first have to tell you a little story about Johnny. Johnny was in Sunday school, and they were talking about God and Jesus and the triune God. And the teacher said, does anybody have any other names for God or Jesus? And people were saying Yahweh, Mighty Counselor, Prince of Peace, and Johnny's in the back row. I got one. I got one. And we even sing about it on Sundays. It's Andy. And he walks with me. (laughs) Thank you. So, August 28th, Lutheran Lounge Act, 7 o'clock here in church, and you'll be able to hear more about the escapades of Johnny and lots more. So, put it on your calendar, and if you have anybody in your family or if you want to come and do something, see either Noreen or myself, and we'll be glad to put you on the, on the schedule. Have a great day. Carla? Alas, no jokes from me. Just a reminder that we are, we, the Capital Appeal Team, are looking for your help. We are looking, we've had a wonderful turnout of people that have said, hey, we'll stuff envelopes, we'll help you. But we need some other kinds of help as well. Things like, um, well, Gina just volunteered to take photographs and create photo collages. We will need some help with people that are good PowerPointers. And so to um, help us continue to make those awesome payments that we've been making on our mortgage on our beautiful facility, using it for ourselves and with our community, we're gonna need your help too. So please, when you get a chance, drop by the office, the church office, and um, let us know that you'll be willing to help. And again, some technical help would be, would be useful to us. So then I just want to thank everybody. We're, you know, we're on track right now to pay our mortgage off here in 2028. Can you believe that? Isn't that just awesome? Because everything that we now put towards mortgage, once that debt is retired, it's available for our work in the community. So thank you all for your attention this morning. And I'm going to put in, I don't know if you noticed, but I stepped away from the mic. So this is Carla wearing her lunch bunch hat now. And so on Friday mornings at 9 o'clock, we gather here in the Salem kitchen, and we make the best peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Last week it was salami. We pack a lunch with apples and carrots and crunchies and good bars and all sorts of things like that. So if you have the if you have the intense desire to make sandwiches and stuff them into paper bags, those get distributed at three spots at Grandpa's Park in Ironton, at the food shelf, we have a stop at the food shelf in Crosby, and then again in our own Veterans Park here. And we usually make a little side run after we're done at Veterans to catch anybody at the splash pad. 
So if you're thinking about that, another good opportunity to volunteer. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? Okay, we'll begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ in seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It's hard to believe. Your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding and we trust in you. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God in Jesus, the manna for heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven, and love is an abundant life. I, I missed the section. Can you please stand? I missed that section. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness you to love and peace in every circumstance. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. God 
to bless our native land, affirm may it ever stand through storm and night. When the wild tempest rave, ruler of wind and wave, do thou our country save by thy great might. So shall our prayers arise to God above the skies, on whom we wait. Thou who art ever nigh, guarding with watchful eye, to thee aloud we cry, God save the state. Good morning, church family. In 597 BCE, the priest Ezekiel was removed into exile in Babylon. Uh, I don't know how to stop that. Up, down. Excuse me. In 597 BCE, the priest Ezekiel was removed into exile in Babylon. While there, he received a vision of God appearing majestically on a chariot throne. Today's reading recounts God's commissioning of Ezekiel during this vision. The prophet is to speak God's word to a people unwilling to hear. This is a reading from Ezekiel chapter 2. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. Whether they hear or refuse to hear, they are a rebellious group, house. They shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 123. To you I lift up my eyes. You have enthroned, you who enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the land of their mistress, so our eyes look to you, O Lord God, until you show us your mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. The word of the Lord. Christians do not boast of their own accomplishments. Rather, Christian boasting focuses attention on how the power of Christ is present in our lives, especially in times of weakness and vulnerability. No matter what our circumstances in life, Christ's grace is sufficient for us. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul writes, I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, 
whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelation. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. At home and abroad, Jesus and his disciples encounter resistance as they seek to proclaim God's word and relieve affliction. The Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all of this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deeds of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, they refuse to hear you, As you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of the Lord. On this birthday of our country, as an American Legion chaplain, I wish to take a moment 
to honor those men and women who have served in the military and by doing so have kept our nation free. If we have members of our audience who served in the military, would those individuals please stand so they can be recognized? Please stand. Now those of you standing, join with me, even though you be uncovered, as we salute this, our United States of America. Hand salute. Two. We thank you for your service, and you may be seated. Now let me ask our Salem family and guests if it seems awkward to see an American Legion member in uniform before you today in the Salem Lutheran Church setting. Does it make you feel uncomfortable that the military has taken a position front and center here in church this morning? Does it feel unnatural that the American flag is displayed prominently in the sanctuary and not relegated to the back of the sanctuary as it usually is. If any of this is disturbing to you, maybe you feel the trappings of the state needs to be separated from church protocol. With Pastor Mike's approval, I would deviate from the scripture lesson today to give you a chaplain's thoughts on the subject, a separation of church and state. Twelve years ago, on a July weekend, my duty as an American Legion chaplain was to co-officiate a gravesite burial for a deceased 30-year American veteran. Prior to the ceremony, I talked to the pastor of the vet's home church, and I asked him where we should insert the flag ceremony. You know, the folded flag that's given to the family, and then followed by a rifle salute and the, and the taps. He told me that his church adhered strictly to the separation of church and state. At best, military rights would have to be relegated to the very end of the funeral and stand alone, separate from any church doctrine. This for a 30-year military veteran, I thought to myself. All because church and state need separation? And why? I always thought that when we sang, America the Beautiful, God shed his grace on thee, that we were asking for the state and religion to work in harmony. But agitation for more separation of church and state seems to be with us wherever we look. More examples beyond my experience at the gravesite abound. Let us look only at a few of them here today on this July 4th, 2021. Certain churches won't allow the American flag in the front of the sanctuary. One pastor was quoted as saying, too much clutter. Yet the American flag symbolizes a nation that is responsible for every church denomination that has taken root in these 50 states. The flag is hardly clutter, for it defends a church's right to exist. This is an example of how the church has attempted to eliminate the state the flag from its wall, from within its walls. Now let's flip the coin and see examples of how the state has tried to eliminate the church from itself. First of all, prayer has, been pract has practically been eliminated from public schools. Why? So that believers in other faiths that use other names for God will not be offended by the use of the Almighty's name. Or perhaps it is that those who don't believe in God at all and don't know his name will not feel put upon by its use. The removal of prayer 
can be troublesome. To illustrate, let me introduce you to Joe Kennedy. <laughs> no, no relation to the Kennedy political family. Joe was 20 years military and combat assigned. After his honorable discharge and four years of college, Joe became a teacher and a football coach at Bremerton High School in the state of Washington. In combat, he had fervently believed in prayer, and this he carried over in his duties as a football coach. He believed that a pregame prayer was needed for his team. His game time prayer always simply asked for three things. Safety for the players, fairness in the game, and spirited competition. And players could join the coach in prayer involuntarily if they wished. How could such a simple prayer be insulting? Nevertheless, one of the school board members took offense and demanded that the board insist on a separation of church from state on issues like prayer. The full board issued Joe a letter, and I quote from the contents, you must remain secular in nature so as to avoid alienation of any team members. This issue has gone to court, and need I say more about that? And here are some additional examples of the state being separated from the church. You know, of course, Certain counties won't allow the posting of the Ten Commandments in any county courthouse. And if they are posted therein, they must be removed. And one more example. A few years back in the day, there were proposals to eliminate In God We Trust from all federal currency. <laughs> what a hubbub that caused. Some have supported this idea seriously, while others have treated it as a joke, saying to themselves, you got to be kidding. It was the basis of an article published May 24th in 2014 in a magazine called The National Report. And the article refers to then-President Obama and the article purports that the president had apparently ordered as of July 1 that all U.S. currency will be printed minus in God we trust. The writer goes on to quote President Obama as saying, as our country grows, so must its money. There are too many individuals living in our great nation who don't, do not worship the same God as most of us. In fact, some folks don't believe in God at all. The currency adjustment is truly something we can believe in. For President Obama, the social media jumped on this and went crazy. And I say again, poor President Obama. Why? Well, because the article was merely fiction. The National Report loves to publish outrageous fake news. Nevertheless, the content of the article arose as a reaction against those who seriously believe that in God we trust has no place in the U.S. currency. And to be absolutely clear, past President Obama never said any of it. So now the Democrats in the sanctuary can relax a little bit. <laughs> but seriously, the removal of things like these in the name of separation of church and state is justified for many because they have misread Article I of the Constitution of the United States of America, or not read it at all. Although Article I does deal with religion, Nowhere therein is the term separation of church and state ever mentioned. So what was intended by our founding fathers about a separate church and state? 
Ben Franklin perhaps says it best as he spoke at our first constitutional convention in Philadelphia in 1787. I quote, I have lived, sirs, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proof I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. We have been assured in the sacred writings that except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that built it, and that without his concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babel. Ben Franklin sees the state existing with God in its midst, midst as a guiding light. That is what the early founding fathers wanted, not a separation, but a togetherness of church and state. Now, let us move ahead 100 years. In that time frame, the District of Columbia had become the nation's capital. And the Washington Monument had been built, inaugurated and open to the public, in reverence for this gorgeous granite and marble building which stretches upward 555 feet. That's better than five basketball courts. With 898 steps, 50 landings. Laws were written that no structure in the District of Columbia could be built that exceeded the height of the Washington Monument. So it was respected, and so it still is. The only part of it let on finish, left unfinished was what would be printed on the capping sill at the very top. It took legislators 25 additional years to decide what should be written on the capping to crown the building. Sounds like our legislatures in St. Paul, doesn't it? Trying to make a decision on the budget. What was finally engraved was simply seven letters, four syllables, two words, a Latin inscription. Lotus Deo. There was finally agreement by legislators on these two words for the capping sill. But what does it mean? It translates, praise be to God. Praise be to God almost shouts heavenward from the highest structure within the 69 square miles that makes, it makes up the district of Columbia. Yes, praise be to God is proclaimed by the greatest of our national monuments. If one stretches trying to read Laos Deo on the capping of the monument, or one stoops to observe other inscriptions found in public places all over our nation's capital, a visitor will easily find the signature of God as it is unmistakably inscribed everywhere. The state then does not separate itself from the church and God. On the contrary, the church and state are inclusive. Though many try to argue that a combination of God and country won't work, their arguments are weak and without basis. Separation of church and state is doomed to fail, for the truth is we have and always have been one nation under God, and I repeat, under God. As the psalmist says in Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds this house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. Do these words sound familiar? Well, they should. What King David wrote in Psalms predates what Ben Franklin said in Philadelphia. The same thoughts from a statesman and a religious writer living centuries apart. 
no separation of church and state from either man. On this 4th of July, 2021, in spite of doubters and distractors, we are one nation under God, and so our country has always been. Laos Deo. And God bless the United States of America on its birthday. Thank you. Okay, we'll now read the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended in He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, and the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We will continue with our offering after we share our peace with one another.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us at what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord's blessings of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.